Welcome back everybody. As you can see, I'm lucky enough to still continue to be able to work on Dorothy here. I also still am able to work at my job. I work for a defense contractor, so we're considered essential. And, uh, and as much as I understand how much of an impact this is having on the entire planet, I appreciate everybody watching. Please, uh, please follow all the guidelines of your particular state, country, region, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and be careful and stay healthy. Good luck and uh, on with the show. Welcome back. Got the uh, going out the bumpers again. Now these this is Dorothy's driver's side stuff. You can see there's like white stuff in here. I don't know if that's street paint or something like that, but that was all over the car also. Um, not as in good a shape as the black cars, but unfortunately, right now the black car's bolt that takes the bottom of the overrider to right there is now essentially rusted together. So I've got that soaking in some PB blaster and stuff and hopefully that'll come around. Because like I said, it's a little bit better. I'll try some heat if worse comes to worse. But I have some very fine steel wool here and thanks to Tom for recommending that. So I'm gonna take the steel wool to this stuff and see if that'll come up a little bit better. My other plan is on the inside of this, I'm going to sandblast it, tape everything off obviously so I, so I can protect the finish sandblast the inside and then paint it with black epoxy primer spi is getting shut down today was their uh, last day georgia i guess is doing like many many other states and, and shutting down non-essential commerce so I, I snuck an order in for to uh, paint the wheels and among other stuff and i got a quart kit of black epoxy so i'm going to black epoxy the inside of these just to try to keep that rust out of there uh, i have a feeling that i'm going to have some problems here because it's pretty good pitting here but we'll see some good dings. But anyway, I'm going to take the steel wool to it and just a little bit of um, lubrication. Uh, Tom recommended some WD-40, so I got that. I got to grab that real quick. So I'll use that as a little bit of lubrication here and then see, and hopefully all these little kind of streaks and stuff in there, I think that, that steel wool is going to take all that out. So we'll see. I was able to get the black bumper apart, black cars bumper, I should say. It's in much better shape. I, uh, I worked on on this for for a while, and you can see there's still quite a bit of pitting and everything in there. I was kind of uh, hoping it would be a little bit better, but now that I got the black cars out, like I said, it looks much better overall. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit and see if this uh, comes out any better. Didn't clean up too bad. I didn't uh, take the buffing wheel to it or anything like that. I think I'm just going to stop and. Uh, I'm not going to get the paint here probably until next week sometime and I'm not going to paint until I'm done cutting and buffing anyway. So I'll put the bumpers aside for now and leave them, uh, leave them be, but consider the rear good to go. I have some other concerns with the front that I didn't point out the last time I had mentioned that they would work. The problem is, is that this is the front overrider here and you can see that they got that big old threaded rod sticking out of it. The original ones don't have that. You take the screw and you go in through here. Also notice here it's got that like little clip. So the clip sits into this portion right here on the, uh, the frame. And then that rod is supposed to go through there. Well, there's no way. I mean, I, I really regret buying these things. It's really upsetting. There's no way that that goes through there and to be able to get the clip on at the same time. So let me, let me put the camera down. I'll try to show you that. All right. So again, I got the, I know it's kind of dark and I, I apologize, but you put the threaded rod through here, but there's no way you can get that lip over there. I mean, you can see probably how much there that, that sticks down. It's a good half an inch. So an option would be to cut this rod down, but then 
I'd be afraid that I would cut too much and not have enough. You can't stick in the top first because then the rod doesn't go in. So I, it's really disappointing that, that what seemed to be pretty simple things, I mean, the originals don't even have that thing sticking out. Why would you not try to copy the original at least? So, um, yeah, kind of, kind of upsetting. So, but I, whatever, I'm, I'm not going to concern myself with it now. I'll, uh, I got some uh, more cutting and buffing to do. Oh yeah. I'm going to try to finish up with this new finishing piece here for the windshield. I've uh, made my way around through the easy stuff already and moving on to where it get, uh, gets a little tricky. So I'm going to grab some Dawn dish detergent here for lubrication. And uh, I got a little finishing piece that kind of goes on the center. If I can find it over here where I put it. This guy right here, it just kind of will cover over top of the uh, the piece there. Joint finisher. Now I'm breaking mine at the top. I don't remember exactly where it's supposed to go properly. I think it's the top. Forgot to check on that. But I'll go ahead and lubricate that guy up real quick and then wrap that around and hopefully I won't break it this time. Now I've got some uh, the flat washers here and I'm going to kind of cheat my way around hopefully. Try to open the rubber up as I work my way around instead of uh, keeping it tight. Hopefully that'll allow me to make the corner without breaking anything. Quite a bit left over there so I'll go ahead and uh, snip that give it just you know a little bit of room in there 16th of an inch or so just a little bit of a gap to allow some flex and then uh, put that finishing piece on I'm not too crazy about the idea of using uh, wire cutters here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it and then I have just a, uh, a regular saw hacksaw blade there and just Lift it off a little bit, obviously, so I don't cut the rubber or anything, and then just uh, take care of it that way. Hopefully, that will be a little bit better. Now, this finishing piece is what a good inch and a half wide, so I do have quite a bit of room here to uh, make a mistake or go too short or too long. But it'll give me a nice clean break too by cutting it. At least, hopefully. this out just to give me a nice clean edge. It looks like it was cut with a pair of wire cutters or something when, when they manufactured it. Oops. Shield. Awesome. So I got the sill taped off here. Now that I fought with myself whether or not to even cut and buff it because there's very little trash and it actually doesn't look too bad at all. But uh, there is some orange peel in it and I'm afraid because I have cut the back and I'm going to cut the bonnet that you're going to see the transition into the orange peel. I mean, do I really care? No. But if you're going to ride, ride a white horse. So but I'm going to start right with 2000 because again, I'm not trying to get any trash out here. I'm just trying to take some of that orange peel out. So I'm going to give it a shot with 2000, do that by hand. And even, uh, even some of the, the, uh, the, the buffer or the rotary, the DA palm sander, because, uh, this is a pretty, pretty controlled and, and, and relatively, uh, easy access here, though I do have to bend down obviously quite a bit. So I'm getting old, but I'll go ahead and, and block this out. And then uh, do the other side, get it buffed up. I don't expect this to be too bad. It'll be uh, a good practice to start with the high grit and, and see if I can get it up to a good shine. Got it done through 3000. Didn't take very long at all. It's going to look pretty good. And uh, just going to hit it now with the, uh, the yellow pad and the, and the V32. 
I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it again. You're not going to, unless you bend over, you're not going to really see down here. But I think this is, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it's probably going to be the sharpest looking place on the car because it didn't really need a whole lot of work. So, well, as suspected, it came out really nice. So, anyway, moving on from that, I think I'm going to play with a little trim piece over here. I, I pointed that out to you uh, in the last video and then totally forgot to do anything about it. So I will go ahead and kind of show you how that fits. And uh, there's some weird stuff there. So it's uh, kind of interesting. And these are uh, stainless. I think they're not, they're not chromed. So I'm just going to take the uh, steel wool to them again and, and the polish and clean them up. Pretty good shape. They, uh, they don't really get too much of a beating. The interesting thing about these, and I'm not, gonna, not sure how well it's going to show up. See that discoloration right there? It's rust couple of rust spots in here throughout and what the rust is from is from these from these clips here that stick it to the car and the interesting part is you've got two different clips two different sizes you've got what I would consider like a more of a standard clip and you got these little guys right here so inside where you can see the rust there's some that are separated by a little bit which tells you that there's two little clips in there you look at the workshop manual and really all it shows is the big clips it's not it's just a photograph it's not uh, doesn't break down the parts per se but these all are original and they came off of Dorothy so what I'm going to do is the big clips I'm going to put four of the big clips on essentially at the beginning and the end and then at two spots throughout the middle and then the little clip clips I'm going to intersperse in between there and just to kind of spread them out and these uh, it kind of goes down you got to hammer it down a little bit it's a little uh, disconcerting and it will probably scratch my paint but I'm gonna go ahead and get the clips cleaned up get the strip cleaned up and then be over to the car and show you how that goes molding piece is all cleaned up I got the uh, the little clips cleaned up as, as best as I could as well now that the workshop manual does say you put the clips down first and then you put the uh, the molding strip down so again I'm going to put the uh, the larger clips at the beginning and the end and then the smaller clips just kind of in the center and frankly kind of cross my fingers that they grab I assume that them being spread out by the, um, the pieces of metal coming together here because you have the outer wing is, is one piece and then the the sail plate and the inside here those are two pieces and they're and they're tack welded together at that point so that's what this trim piece is for is kind of cover up that cosmetically so it simply just fits over top like that and there is a little bit of scrape in here that it's taken off a little bit of paint right in there and uh, at various places but I definitely need some uh, some attachment here so we're gonna go ahead and just kinda go for it oh yeah paint chipping all over the place right, put a couple small ones in So we got uh, what I'd use one, two, three, four big ones, one, two, three, four, five, six little guys. And now we'll just go ahead and snap this on. I'll start at the back and work my way forward. Don't know why, just because that's the way I want to do it. You can definitely feel where the clips are because they, they splay that uh, that trim piece out. But looks like it's going to be in here pretty good again with my paint chips flying all over the place. So lovely. But all in all, not too bad. So bling bling. I didn't really give you a good close up of these clips here you can see I don't know how well it's gonna come up but the um, 
inside of the clips, you see in the profile there, the inside of the clips have a little barb on them. It's almost like a fish hook. And then the outside of the clip has a little barb on it. So when you put it down onto the car, this barb right here catches on the car. And then when you put the trim piece on, that barb right there catches on the trim piece. So these things are, you know, like little torture, little torture things here. It's amazing how many different kind of clip designs are all over the car. Some are just flat and they'll like pinch a piece of fabric or a pinch a piece of vinyl around something like the, like the seats were. Sometimes they're like this with all sorts of stuff sticking out. Sometimes the, the barbs are just to the inside. There's uh, several different designs throughout the entire car. So let's get the trim piece on now. So we'll get this kind of lined up a little bit. Trim piece done. Probably could have gone that way with it a little bit, but it'll work. Got the other sill all taped off here. I'm going to go ahead and get this all blocked and buffed and cut and all that kind of good stuff. I'm not going to show you any of this. I'll show you when I'm all done. So the sill is done. Came out just as good as the other side did. So small victories. The, um, can't remember if I showed you this. You can see that big white mark there. That's, uh, I put the doors on shortly after I painted or just try to fit them up and, and unfortunately kind of chipped the paint there. I still think I've got adhesion problems, but you know, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to interior stuff, kind of change, uh, change the pace a little bit. I have this, uh, Newton commercial carpet kit, which is a molded carpet kit. You can kind of tell that it seems to fit very well. I know I've pointed this out in the past, but I'm going to go ahead and start playing with that now. i got to clean out the inside, got some stuff at, in here. Got the interior all cleaned out. A couple things. I've punched holes through the sound editing stuff for the seat mounts. And I also have the uh, seat belt mounts, eyelets, things in there. I had to punch holes through there. I was lucky enough to be able to um, find several of these that were uh, new old stuff, NOS stuff. So the first piece I'm going to put on is this trim piece that goes over top of the wheel arch. Now this is just a regular piece of vinyl. And the problem with this is potentially that it's going to uh, all bunch up and everything as it tries to make the complex curve going around the vinyl and all that kind of stuff. So you can see I got those magnets that I purchased a while ago to uh, to kind of help me hold stuff so I can get a feel for what's going on. I think what I'm going to have to do here is start gluing from the bottom and kind of glue a little bit and, and stop and let that cure up a little bit and then move along and just try to work um, that, that creases out as best as I can without cutting it. Now, obviously it can be done because the factory did it, but it's going to be a little tricky. The other piece I'm going to look at with the carpet kit, it has you do it in a certain order. The first pieces are those ones up in the uh, the footwell there that go on the sides, and that's going to cover up some stuff for me, so I want to make sure really the only thing I have to worry about, I think, is the check strap there for the door, so I kind of want to make sure that that's all in there because once this carpet goes on, these pieces get glued. That's, uh, that's pretty much it, so I don't want to mess that up. So that'll be uh, first order of business. This is the adhesive I'm using, 3M Headliner Adhesive. Got pretty good recommendations. Uh, obviously picked it up from Amazon. I don't remember how much it was. 10 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead. It does tell you to spray both surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and do the wheel arch uh, about halfway up or so. And then I've got the, the piece of vinyl sitting on my uh, workbench. So I'm just going to uh, also use a piece of cardboard or something to try to minimize the overspray in there just to protect incidental stuff. Goes on like Spider-Man's web. Kind of neat. All right, so the window of opportunity here, it says, is 30 seconds to 15 minutes when it's quote unquote aggressively tacky. So we're going to give it a couple minutes here, let it sit, and then I'll come over and uh, start putting it on. Well, it'll be very interesting here to see how much forgiveness it has if I put it on, you know, want to kind of peel it back off and, and that kind of stuff.
I got that piece in, uh, it was okay. There's a couple wrinkles here and here. And you can also see I've also got this other piece in. This is the, um, just the wrap around and it snips in here. Now this is all one piece and you really gotta crank the curve on it. It's, uh, it's pretty aggressive. And then there's holes that you probably really can't see. There's a hole here, there's a hole here, there's a couple of them as you work your way up. And those are get held in with some screws. And then in here, you've got this trim piece, which I took off, that'll also get in there. Um, what I don't remember is what goes into these larger gaps here. These, uh, these clips here on this trim piece don't extend. You can see there's holes there. I just don't remember what goes in there, so I gotta look, look into that. But I'm gonna uh, pull this back off. There's another piece of vinyl that goes down in here. So just this, this little strip there. So I just put this up here real quick to mark it so that I know where my vinyl needs to go and I'll wrap it around the, uh, the door here. I'm pretty sure that's how it was anyway. And then the, the painful part is gonna be trying to mark where these little screws go to get them into there. Got the strip in. I, uh, as I cut it, I thought, kind of second thought, I said I was going to bend it over and then I decided not to, but now I'm not so sure that that would not have been the better idea because when I go to put the fuzz seal on for the door, I'm afraid it's going to tend to push this out of the way, so who knows if I'm right or wrong on that. But now I've got that in there, so now the trick is going to be to find the little screw holes for the, uh, the, the balance piece or the trim piece that goes in here and then be able to translate them into that piece. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. So we'll uh, try to come up with something. Now I can't come up with a good way to, uh, to get the hole started. So there's two in the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can get my fingers in here. Two down here. There's one about there and then there's one all the way back up here on the uh, support there. Now that one should be covered. There's a balance that goes behind that. But back to the point, there's no way that I can figure out how to get the holes transferred perfectly, so I think I'm just gonna kind of make new ones. I just try to eyeball it as best as I could here and, uh, and pop a hole through with a drill bit. The same thing in this corner here. bad there. Is what it is, I guess. Maybe I'll try a pattern on the next one, except do the pattern out of the whole thing. And then uh, try to try it somehow that way. All right, moving on. So this kick panel in here, pretty much, you know, it's one nice thing about these molded carpets is this pretty much just fits right in there. I think the trick with this is gonna actually be getting glue coverage everywhere that I need glue coverage. So it's uh, there's a little bit of a, this, this little clip here, if you can see that is where the crash pad goes, the lower pad that kind of holds up the glove box that's, uh, a little low for this carpet kit so I'm gonna have to cut a little bit back here just to get rid of some extra carpet that's in there but otherwise this thing pretty much fits like a glove so I'll pull that out I'll cut that back real quick go to town spraying it and then try to get it back in there all right that fits good go to town spraying everything we'll get that guy in there
All right, the next piece goes in here with the blue. That seems like it's gonna be a little painful. Let's take a look. All right, next piece is this guy right here. I had to trim out a little bit uh, over on this side to let it sit down a little bit, so I got that pretty much flushed up. Thankfully, it matches perfectly with the, uh, the one over here, but it goes back and, and kicks, kicks into the heel board back here, and this has got to be cut pretty flush with the board, if not even a little bit short, because there's another carpet piece that gets glued to the heel board. So if anything, I want to go just a tad bit short, try and find where I need to cut here. See, I'm using those magnets. Working pretty well. All right, good. Looks like I got that. Now I'm going to grab the heel board one real quick, just because I want to see to make sure that it actually stretches all the way to the side of the car. It's actually a little long, if anything. Looking at this, I will bring this uh, piece of carpet here all the way to the bulkhead, or to the heel board, just like it is. All right, now the, what I'm afraid of with this is I've got to bend down bend it around especially here because this whole flap is going to want to come up that's going to be a tricky uh, gluing process there there is a piece um, that fits over top of here so at least they'll hide that a little bit but again i'm more concerned that when i try to make the bend it's it's not going to uh, it's not going to play so unfortunately i think what i'm going to have to do is glue flat here let it let it dry the entire time and then uh, and then come back at it so now i got to cut out for the uh this this piece here try to sneak that in there that'll be fun without messing it up Cut this a little bit, try to anyway, so I can sneak it underneath there. All right, that looks like it's going to work out pretty good. Cut it just a tad bit short back here, but I don't think it's going to pop out underneath. All right, so. I'm going to protect this, shoot glue all down this side, and then essentially be done with it at that point. All right, I put this uh, top trim piece off. You can see the huge gap that's in there. Fortunately, there's a screw about here and about here that will hopefully bring that up a little bit. But this uh, this board in here is pretty sprung. But you know, what it, uh, not much I can do about it. So I don't know. I gotta check out. I think I mentioned I gotta see what goes in here. I think they're probably those uh, spire nuts or something that go behind here. I really don't remember. Probably gonna have to take that wood off or the board off again, unfortunately. But I got uh, a little bit of carpet in there. This piece came out better than I thought. You can see that I used all these clamps with a piece of wood to, to protect the carpet and to provide some force and, and, and wood here. But I was afraid that that corner wouldn't turn, but it seems to have turned pretty good. Some trimming to do and all that. You can see there's a little bit of carpet overhang there and obviously quite a bit of carpet overhang there. I'll just come through with a razor knife and, and get that stuff cut out. And. Uh, yeah, so starting to do some interior. Yes, the bonnet is in still the same shape. All right, folks, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Starting to make some uh, 
progress on the interior. It's a little bit different than cutting and buffing. All that's left now is the bonnet in the very front. So hopefully I'll be able to take care of that over the next couple of visits. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Cheers.